This is the case of a 73 year old lady with third degree uterovaginal prolapse for whom colpoclysis was performed. We usually put labial stitches for better visualization. The apex of the prolapse, that is the cervix, is grasped with the vulcillum. And the uterine sound is used to confirm the position of the external os. Two rectangular sections of vaginal mucosa, one anteriorly and one posteriorly, are outlined for dissection. Anteriorly, the rectangular section is marked 4 cm below the urethra and 2 cm above the cervix. Posteriorly, the rectangular section is marked 2 cm below the cervix and 4 cm above the hymenal ring. The planes are then hydrodissected using diluted adrenaline. As mentioned in our previous videos, the needle has to be maintained at an angle of 0 to 15 degrees. The anterior vaginal epithelium can be seen being raised. Good hydrodissection is always a good start to the surgery. An incision is made over the outlined area using the cautery. The outlines of the anterior and posterior rectangles create two lateral epithelial strips which serve as drainage tunnels. The edges of the raised flaps are held and sharp dissection is used to denude the outlined vaginal epithelial rectangles from the underlying fibromuscular connective tissue. It is essential to maintain hemostasis at all times and so the bleeders are cauterized. Posteriorly, the outlined areas have lightened but as mentioned earlier, rectangular flap is raised even posteriorly. Posterior dissection is also done using scissors, similar as done anteriorly.
care must be taken to ensure that enough vaginal mucosa is spared at the edges to make a patent tunnel. The tunnel helps in the drainage of the secretions. The first suture is taken near the cervix. Note the bite is first taken through the fascia, then through the vaginal mucosa anteriorly and then posteriorly through the vaginal mucosa and back again through the fascia. The suture is then tied. Here we are using Vicryl 2.0. A catheter, in our case a Riles tube, is then placed in front of the cervix to create the tunnel. Similar bites are taken, first anteriorly through the fascia, then the vaginal mucosa, posteriorly through the vaginal mucosa and then through the fascia. With the cervix reduced, the surgery continues with creating the tunnel. While tying the sutures, make sure the catheter is inside the tunnel and not hanging outside. With both sides tunnel being created, the surgery proceeds to reduce the prolapse with multiple successive figure of 8 sutures.
Once the prolapse has been completely reduced, the vaginal epithelium is approximated in an interrupted or running fashion, interrupted in our case with Vicryl number 1. In the end, the catheter is removed. Note that the catheter should be freely mobile and should easily come off. The procedure is completed by performing a levetroplasty. Once again, hydrodissection is done using diluted adrenaline. An incision is made in the posterior vaginal wall. Initial sharp dissection is done to reach the levator ani muscle. One can feel a thick band which is a part of the levator ani muscle. After dissection, the levator ani muscle is plicated using Vicryl number no. 1 suture. Once the levator ani muscle is plicated, our posterior vaginal wall incision is closed using Vicryl At the end of the procedure, we can see how well the prolapse has been reduced.